This is the JJO Morning Show Podcast with Johnny and D. Listen, rate, subscribe. Ah. Thank you for being a friend. Thank you. 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 All right, you son bitch. What you thankful for? Oh man. I would like to thank you. I don't know for what. No. Oh. <laughs> I was looking for something epic, but uh nothing. I nothing really at all. couldn't think of anything. <laughs> Uh, yeah, thanks for showing up at work at four in the morning. Okay, nobody, yeah. nobody else wants to. So yeah. Yeah. Uh, thanks for not calling in. Today. What are we thankful for? I'm thankful for my awesome golf swing. Mm. Oh, it's a, this is about other. This is about sharing. Uh, it's about it's a thank you day, not a not a not a like gratitude day. <laughs> supposed to not thank a, other people. Not a day for self pleasure, but to thank others right. for their contributions. I say thank you to Ski Ball for not. Murdering us for oh. announcing trip to the chip a day early. Well, I'm thankful we haven't. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, we screwed that up. That was a bad one. Uh, we got chewed out. Whatever. I, I, I did not. Uh, I, I didn't get chewed out. Uh, I've been chewed out before. I don't care. Uh, I'm grateful on a. Uh, we haven't nuked each other yet. Yeah. Well, Obviously. Yeah. So I go there. I'll start right. there. Work my way down. Well, thank you for not murdering me. <laughs> to the little things. Right. <laughs> I love it. Uh, yeah. Th- I guess. Thank you to everybody that voted for me, making me the third most popular DJ in Madison. Man, congrats. <laughs> Look at you wielding all the radio power in Madison. My God. I'm going to rub it, you can in, make it as often as I can. You make and break news stories, dude. You're, you're, in, so, in, in, you're under the influence. I mean, you're an influencer. That's what you are. Don't. don't How duh. dare you, sir? How dare you? Mm. Every day I wake up and breathe, I'm pretty thankful. It's a beautiful, yeah. it's a beautiful world. If you like, thank to, you, oxygen. If you care to stop and look around and smell the roses yeah. a little bit, and uh, I'm thankful I don't wake up too hateful every day. A yeah. lot, lot to be angry about, but try to maintain a friendly demeanor. Yeah, try to find my, the positives. My friend Ra thinks everything is it's pretty awesome. She'll be like, she'll get out of her car and she's like, "Thank you, car, for the safe ride." <laughs> <laughs> that would and get then, annoying, you know, though, really quick. She'd be like, thank you, House, for keeping <laughs> me safe, you know? Uh, yeah, she made this post about these solar power li- lights. She's like, thank you, son. And oh, I was wow. like, yeah, I know. But, but then, you know, what's really wild, though, she does that, and she started doing it, like, two years ago, and you'd be, like, the abundance of... Wealth in all the ways you could think have come her way. Isn't that wild? Uh, like good things. Yeah. Like 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 a pot like a. Power like she met thing. her soulmate and moved to Vegas. Is engaged. <laughs> they just got a new house that's mm-hmm. gorgeous. That you know, like uh, like just all the things. So man. positive, positive yeah. thinking. So the whole positive thinking in a great rack got her to Vegas for the, with a really nice looking guy. She's she's not a no. She does not have a big rack. Um. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I I wouldn't go overboard with it, but I that would get annoying. Well, th- there is a thing I was reading about. How- Thank you, can of soup. Thank you, spoon. Thank you, cup of water. Thank you, air. You, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, that's that's not gonna work at my house. Yeah, it's a lot. Uh, but so I was reading this thing. Whatever, some. <laughs> spiritual person you know she could go in the guinness book of records for most thank you for being the most thankful person on earth yeah i'm just not sure how you would measure that well you'd have to monitor her you'd have to hook her up to a machine she could just sit in a room and just talk to herself just be thankful Mm -hmm. um yeah there was something about how your gratitude being grateful it operates at the same uh, frequency as something else that provides you with abundance. 
So whatever. So should we uh, inflict this thankful mood on other people? Yeah, I or? think you like thank somebody today. All right. Even I'm going to thank my buddies for buying me beers all day because I got them free golf today. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's nice. But, uh, but first, I'm going to say you owe me, you cheap bastards. Well, well that's fine. As long as you say right. thank you. Then I'll say thank you. You just got to say thank you. You can you can be like thank you, you c word. I'm trying to think if I, I try to think if I said thank you yesterday. I guess I didn't. <clears throat> I don't think I did. I oh I oh really? No. <clears throat> what do you say? Quick trip when they say see you next time. Do you say thank you or you say not if I see you first? No, I'll be like thanks. Yeah, or, or you too. I said thanks a few times yesterday, but I was also around many living things. So I think the horses all the time when they're not assholes to me when I feed uh, and stuff. Right, right. They do what you're, they're told, so yeah. you thank them. Yeah. Yeah, I think they'll get it. They do. Eventually if they hear it a million times. 100%. If you, if you don't say it and then s- slap them in the n- nose, they'll, right. they'll get it. But, but, but you say thank you and you give them a treat, trust me. They don't. They're eating out of the palm of your hand. Yeah. Literally. But sometimes I'll be like, thanks, dick bag. Ah, you know, see, which is not a true thank you. Right. <laughs> it's a half a thank you. It's like, yeah. Uh-huh. Okay, well, uh-huh. I, will try to, uh, I will try to get out there and do good thank yeah. yous today. I, uh, that's a th- Only today, though. Oh, Adam said, I'm thankful for you two idiots. <laughs> Thanks, buddy. Uh, you know, thank you. Also, random person, I don't know your name. I appreciate your text. Look at this. We're so thank you y. <laughs> Seems to be catching. They clearly want tickets to trip to the chip, which is sold out. So clearly, I see through your little. What do you people want what from us? What the hell? I know what you want. Yeah, not fooling anybody down here. See, look at us. Look at those grease balls. We, you're suspect. We don't trust anybody. You ruin everything. Even thank yous from people we know for 20 years. We don't trust. Get out of here. People, relax. What a complete waste. We are killing it online. Have you guys checked the comments? Of cyberspace. Smoke That Skin Wagon says, you guys are killing it. The JJO Morning Show Podcast. We're internet sensations. Johnny and D, nowhere but JJO. I don't know if you want to open up the phone lines, John. Yeah, let's open up the phone lines. Uh, 3210-4-what-avclub.com. Uh, well, listen, lists are where it's at, dude. Uh, put together a list of the 50 greatest music videos of all time. Ah. This is spanning all genres. Oh, my. Yeah, I know, right? So I figure just call in and be like, hey, "What's? If, I'm sure it's probably hard to pick up, pick out the greatest music video of all time, but how about your personal greatest? Boy, it's, God, is that tough. I was thinking about that the whole time you were uh, yapping over there. It's so hard. Man, do you just, you just throw in the towel and say Thriller for Michael Jackson? Is that what most people do? Thriller mean? is number three on the it list. Is? Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> I, thought yeah. It, I thought it would do better to jet. Uh, how would you, what would, what's number two? Mm-hmm. Hold on, hold on, hold on. So confused. So confused. Um, what's Madonna I, Oh, Vogue. Madonna. Uh, number two. Okay, well, yeah, that was a thing. Uh, number one. This is, oh, Sledgehammer. Yeah. That's a great, so, great video. That stop action crap with the train tracks. That was yeah. fantastic. It's iconic. I saw Peter Gabriel in Milwaukee 20 years ago. He had like a 40 person African drum section with him. It was That's so cool. Unbelievable. Fun show. I don't know if he still does that stuff. Uh, turn down for what? Turn down. That's from uh, Abby. She said it's. Kind of an overrated song, but the video is amazing. A sledgehammer? No, turn down for what? Oh. Turn down for what? Oh. Yeah, the yeah. Okay. I agree. One hundred percent. And that's like a lot of the ones on the list. I'm like, I don't really like the song, but the video is badass. Mm-hmm. Uh number four on the list is actually one of our artists. Great video. Undeniably awesome video. With their mustaches. I 
like a lot of the Beastie Boys videos, though. Um, what other iconic ones? Thinking of uh, November Rain. Yep, that's uh, on and, there. And I always think of two things from that video. I think of Axel forgetting the ring. And then look on the preacher's face and then slash freaking shredding at the church. Yeah. Which was really cool. That's the main thing I remember about that video. It was a great video. I thought song two from Blur was one of the greatest videos ever, too. I don't know if I remember Where, the video. Because when he hits the woo-hoo, he like always oh, like is thrown oh. into the wall and into the ceiling and whatever. It's okay. pretty cool. You uh, like uh, Nirvana? How about those weenie heads? What do you, where do you put them? Uh, yeah, I don't know that I've actually watched a lot of their videos. They did make the list somewhere for, I think it was for. It smells like Teen Spirit. They only put a generation of rockers out of work. Him in his stupid sweater. Oh my god. What else? It's already Big Hair Friday. You need to calm down. Well, I'm I'm getting uh, emotionally disturbed. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Oh, who else? Weezer, Buddy Holly. Like oh, we're just talking our artists. I remember that one. Yeah. Was he dressed up like Mister Rogers or something? Um. Well, they Did, were. Dressed... Didn't they have sweaters on or something? Oh yeah. I remember they, that they video. Were, like throwback stuff. I don't. God, you don't see these videos anymore. Y- yeah. Nobody plays videos. You got to go hunt them down. Um, it, which is funny. MTV still has an award show. And they don't play videos. Yeah. So stupid. Uh, Back Loser is on the list, too. I think that rounds out our artists. Oh, the White Stripes are on there for Fall in Love with a Girl. Well, if you're going to go. Twisted Sister, we're not going to take it. There you go. Hot for teacher from I was going to say with the kids, you had, uh, if you're going to go, if you're really going to pick one, how about the Buggles video killed the radio So that ended up at number 50. Yeah, that was the first one ever played. First video played on MTV. Yeah. Midnight, I think. And then this one I was thinking too. Uh-huh. Aha. Uh-huh. Aha. Uh-huh. 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 That's kind of a kind of a sexy video, wasn't it? That that, that sketch, the pencil yeah. sketch. Yeah. That's kind of cool. It was cool. Yeah, he fights the yeah, the cartoon guy, doesn't he? They got aha, take on me, Power 95. God, oh, you that. missed the post. I have, yeah, I know. It's been a while. Fired. It's been a while. Radio oh, Squid Games, you're shot. Yeah, I've been fired. <laughs> for, I've been fired for uh, less, trust me. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> um, what about, where's, uh, where's, oh, you already said number three, Michael Jackson. Yeah. Uh, no. See, you got to put Billy Jean up there, too. That was a great video. Um, you got to put a Weird Al Yankovic or Eat It. That was a great video. No, they're Didn't not on it? here. They're not on here. Jeez. What are the people saying? We got a phone what are the people saying? We got a phone call over there. What about what about WAP? A Sonic Youth Teenage Riot WAP. I love that. Hey, how about the Hoobastank video? Uh, the, sl- the, the slow song? Which Hoobastank? The one where with they, the concert they, they footage? They robbed that guy. The lady gets hit by the car. Oh, I don't know that one. I dude, I have not watched a video in freaking forever, man. It's such yeah. a rush yep. to think about all these old videos. That's the reason. The oh, the reason. reason. That's yeah. what I was thinking. That was concert footage, I think. Wasn't? No, wasn't no. that? Oh, is that's that the, the video one? he's talking about? Oh, gotcha. Uh, what was the? U- that is a pretty good video. What was I the U two video where they were in Vegas? That was kind of sexy. Uh, Streets have no name. That was kind of cool. For no particular reason. Yeah, right. <laughs> I don't know why it was cool. I don't know if you two made Hi. It. White Wedding by Billy Idol. Oh, dude, thank you. Throwing Billy Idol a bone. I love it. All his videos were great. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, and, and that reminds me of the police videos, too, where, you know, with the... Uh, Billy Jean, by the way, ended up on the list at number 38, but no Billy Idol. Man, what about the first time we all saw Britney Spears? One more time is definitely on the list. Oh man, that was tectonic, dude. Uh, number Holy eleven. Crap, dude. That was ahead of uh, November Rain. Mm, she had a little. Uh, <laughs> let's not go there, Daddy. Oh, dude, yeah. Nope. <laughs> let's not. Uh, Britney's Instagram feed. She got that stripper pole, and I'm like, honey. <laughs> she looks so good in that video. Talk about uh, the uh, the Gaga video, Bad Romance. That's on the list. Man, yeah. that was a kooky, weird video. Mm-hmm. I freaking loved it. 
Uh, Public her. Enemy Fight the Power, Fiona Apple Criminal. Oh, Rhythm Nation from Janet Jackson. Oh. Hell yeah. Yeah, I think I remember that. Uh, David Bowie, Ashes to Ashes. God damn, that stupid R.E.M. song. Man. They have, uh, <laughs> Who likes R.E.M. anyway? ZZ Top and their spinning guitars. Yep, legs. Um, Any Metallica, Megan? Number 22. Any Metallica videos? So. No. No, they did not. Uh, Hungry Like the Wolf. Oh, well, there you go. Made it. Uh... Well, that's what the Buggles predicted that. Video did kill the radio star for a while because you got to see all the sexy girls and guys making hot videos. They were like future. They were like psychics. Nostradamus. Video did kill the radio star. Ooh. Number seven. Yep, I remember that video. Man, I just don't really watch videos these days unless a band posts something. Correct. I'm like, oh. Yeah, correct. Yeah. Um, which is... They don't storytell very much in videos anymore. It's There's not like storyline, weird, kooky, Cindy Lauper right. wrestling s- s- backdrops anymore, you know? Well, here you go. You don't even make them like this anymore. All right. Another great video. Yeah, there's just some videos that are eternally cool. I yeah. mean, that's one of them. 100%. And then and then they get ripped off, too. Shania Twain did one with dudes. They're just timestamps in your life. You remember where you were. Um, a lot of people were texting in saying one from Metallica. Uh, Corn Freak on a Leash. Ooh. White Snake, Foo for your life. Oh, yeah, what am I talking about? <laughs> Here I go again. Oh, my God. Tawny Katane on the car. Oh, yeah. my God. I'm not doing my job. I apologize. Oh That's got to be tough. Dude, it's not on the list. Are you kidding me? I cannot believe that one is not that on the list. That's li- unacceptable. That list blows. <laughs> That's one of the most... Everybody knows... They, they still make commercial ripoffs about that video. Right. Oh, I man. I mean, come on. You're going to have to play that song for Big Hair. That's a shame. Mm-hmm. That's a bad list. That's a somebody just forgot. That's not that's not being mean. They just forgot the video. Somebody forgot to submit that one. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know that. We thought it was covered, you know. Yeah, that's like an automatic. You don't even have to say it. <laughs> that should be in the top twenty. Uh, the real Slim Shady. Well, that, that's another just an iconic friggin' video. Right. Um, Jamiroquai, Virtual Insanity. I was trying to think of the top. Wait, the top first videos played on MTV. Outcast, Hey Yeah, that's an awesome vid. Yeah, there's some. Oh, Walk This Way made it. Sure. I'm I mean, this so, is like revolutionary stuff, too, I'm you know? I'm so angry about the white snake. I can't even, <laughs> Dude, I can't even, you can't even focus. I can't even go on right now. <laughs> so, when Video Killed the Radio Star, You Better Run by Pat Benatar. That was concert footage. That was her on stage. She Won't Dance With Me by Rod Stewart. You Better You Bet by The Who. Little Susie's on Top by PhD. That was the Tesla cover. Yeah. Kids, you should see that. And then uh, We Don't Talk Anymore by Cliff Richard. We don't talk. Oh, yeah. What uh, a cheese ball that dude was. Right. Brass in Pocket by The Pretenders. Time Heals by Todd Rundgren. And uh, Take It On a Run by Ario Speedwagon, which was a good video, too. Yeah. Ice Nine Kills has some pretty awesome videos. We got a text in about them. That was kind of a solid first hour for MTV, I got to say. That's pretty cool. Foo Fighters, Everlong, Perfect Drug from Nine Inch Nails, Porn Star Dancing. Sticks rocking in paradise. They were always very visual. Sticks always thought about that stuff. Any ACDC video? What's the Journey video where they're all in turtlenecks? Well, the vi- the, 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 the <laughs> what's the one Journey video? They were out on the shipping dock just right. standing around playing air guitar. Yeah, oh, that's just, the one I'm talking oh, about. This is the worst it's so video. Bad. <laughs> It's like, look, what's the budget? The the budget for this video is we bought six double D batteries, and when they run out, the video shoots over. <laughs> That's the, 
Kitchen. I remember I was at a restaurant uh, somewhere, like some sports bar or whatever. It's the and cheesiest. I, was like, I would vote that the cheesiest video ever made. Well, and there wasn't any sound on. I was just seeing right. the video right. with no sound because right. there was some sports ball game on. And I was like, what the hell is this video even? And then uh, when I, I looked it up, they I Googled like, it. I you, like, you think you they're be, be sitting me. there going, they just let six guys out of the insane asylum. And they're down on the dock <laughs> trying to make a video. <laughs> you can't hear the sound. <laughs> you got, and then that's what I was like. God damn, the 80s were wild. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it was so dumb. Yeah, that was journey. Separate man. ways. Separate ways. It was so yeah. weird. Yeah. yeah, their videos were, were very visual, but they were uh, they were goofy, man. A lot of concert footage from yeah. Journey in their videos. Most of them was concert footage. Yeah. As it should be. But, uh, yeah, that video. Oh, yeah, Black Hole Sun from Soundgarden. But there was no, call. I mean, uh, uh, is it still art? Sure. Yeah. I mean, you know. A Little Piece of Heaven by no, Ben Sevenfold, yeah. Nobody knew what a bad video looked like back then. Right. There, there was no bad video. All you knew was you were watching your band, you're like, oh, my God. These guys are goofballs. I love it. Um, yeah, let's see. Who who came up with this list? Uh, the occasion of the 39th MTV VMAs allows us to look back on great videos that have been made over the years. Um, oh, don't think of this list as a comprehensive one as much as a thorough sampler. That's a good way to look at it. Uh-huh. It's a good way to get out of people yelling at you for not putting White Snake on it. That's mind-blowing. <laughs> that is a disgrace. That really is. But it's kind of cool because the list really does go through. I mean, Missy Elliott work gets on there. It's I, all genres. I, I don't think there was a bigger moment in in, in video history than when Tawny Katane did the splits on that Jaguar. <sighs> I don't. I like the Cherry Pie video, I mean, too. That was so dumb. You don't have to like the band or the song, but there's no way. Right. That's not burned into your brain. That's incredible. Yeah. What do, what do you remember? The name of the video with four guys on a shipping dock playing air guitar or Tony Katane <laughs> with no panties on on a Jaguar? Yeah. I'm assuming. I, I like to think there were no panties. <laughs> You're just... <it's... laughs> Rest in pepperonis, lady, with no panties. Yeah. Damn no it. Kidding. We thought uploading to the cloud oh. was something completely different. Come on, water, read. The JJO Morning Show Podcast. <laughs> Johnny and D, JJO. Uh, we've been witnessing <clears throat> before our very eyes history repeating itself. Shocking. Mullets have returned. Oh, yeah. So it's a fanny pack. Oh, shh. Saw people wearing wedge shoes the other day. Called it. Mm hmm. Uh, Jankos returned. Jankos. So awesome. You're Janko. Stop. And now. Jorts are back. Jorts? Yeah. You know what a jort is? I know what a jart is. What's a jart? Something you throw at your sister's head with a mm-hmm. pointy tip. Well, they aren't pointy anymore. <laughs> they rounded and dull. Yeah, I, I know. They're called Nerf. They're called, <laughs> it's called a Nerf gun. This be jorts. Jorts, the pants, I figured, yeah. Uh, jean shorts, but they're real baggy. Though. Yeah, down below the knee a little yeah, bit. Yeah, 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 yeah. Jorts. Uh, real baggy. Though. I feel like Tommy Rage wears those a lot. Yeah. But he wears like a tighter version of the jort. Maybe I'm mistaken. I don't know. I don't really. Yeah. You know what I've noticed is you pay attention to what dudes wear a lot. That's not true. Chris Daughtry. Well, he looks like a, <laughs> he looks like an alien. It's hard to not notice. I don't know anyway. what it, I don't know what he's going for. Um. No. Are, you, are you from the future? Are you here for a reason? So the short, tight cutoffs and Daisy Dukes, I guess, never went out of fashion. But now the '90s style, longer ones that go past your knees. Are trendy, especially for the women's. Um, there's even uh, uh, middle-aged dads pulling off the look, which why not? Um, I I suppose they're so everything's sh- coming back around. I'm sure I mean, they, the the uh, Gen Zs pretending they invented the jort at least at least don't sound stupid and and acknowledge they've been here before. God, so, so I heard some, someone called Gen Z the Christopher Columbus generation because they keep thinking they're discovering things, but they aren't. <laughs> yeah, I've never heard it put more appropriately. It's true. You're stupid. I'm sorry, but you're stupid. 
You're not that important. Stop trying to act like it and just just act normal. We've done it. God. We were the king of jorts. We were the king of jorts and fanny packs. And you cannot have them. Yeah. No fanny pack for you. So I don't know what's every everything's coming back. I mean, I guess anything's on the table. All them 80s patterns are coming back. Well, the, the bell bottoms have been a thing for a while. Oh, yeah. Uh, the corduroy. Now, the corduroy bell bottoms I haven't seen around. Like I used to wear in fifth grade. Yeah. When I well, it. I think they had to take corduroy bell bottoms off the shelf because they started too many fires. It's, People it's be, true. <laughs> right. right. And then they run and... Right. <laughs> spontaneously combust so the jort are people uh making them themselves or are they they're it's like no, a brand? instead of that they're spending way too much money from designers for oh, who is the band that would have been limp biscuit were they jort dudes no they but the they were like jenko dudes who would have been a jort a person I'm trying to oh, think of somebody see, famous jorts <laughs> famous jorts <laughs> a definitive ranking of the best Celebrity jorts. Chris, oh, Chris Brown. Oh, oh, sure. Okay, yeah. sure. Okay, I remember. They, they weren't. They, they weren't jeans, though. They were some other fabric. They were jeans, but they were. Yeah, I remember. Sure, I remember him wearing jorts. Uh, Shia LaBeouf, Madonna. Wait till the Gen Z comes out and goes. Mm, we've discovered that if you wear socks with shoes, your feet don't sweat. Mm, look at us. Mm. Uh, Madonna. Wore jorts with a high boot, which is a strange okay. flex. Uh, Ursher, Rihanna. Uh, there's everybody. Yeah, oh, nobody. Uh... George Costanza. Uh, David Beckham. Okay, who works out like that? Is that you at the Princeton Club, John? Is, it, is that Beckham? Yeah. I wish I looked like that. Those aren't jorts. It's, they're calling him Jort. Oh. I think those are too short to those be Jort. Way too short. Too short to Jort. Oh, uh, Mark Wahlberg. I remember wearing. Uh, I love you, Mark Wahlberg. I remember flannel used to be huge when I was like in a third, fourth. We were all wearing flannel. It was just the thing well, you wore. And then when it was cold me, out, imagine that. For me. <laughs> We were ahead of the curve, Nirvana. So take take that. A functional flannel. The functional flannel. <laughs> yeah, you have to be very not, particular. Not just for looks. Well, yeah, because when I was in like seventh, eighth grade, that's when flannels were huge. Uh huh. And I mean, oh my god. Yeah. You tie it around your waist. It's ninety degrees. And you got a goddamn flannel with you. I, I feel like flannel has just uh, re- tested and, and 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 been successful over the. Have have just always made it. Yeah, I don't know that flannel's ever gonna. It's like if you looked at a graph. Yeah. It'd be just even all the way through the. Well, there would be like spikes. Oh uh, well, sure. You okay, know? I'll give you the ninety-one spike. Sure, I'll give you that. What's the other spike in flannel? Well, it's back now too. You think it spiked back up? Oh, dude, look at fall. Everybody, all the women wear the red and black or the white and black checkered sure, flannel. Sure, sure, but I I don't see a spike in that. I just okay, so a, a, a seasonal spike. Okay, I'll give you that. Well, even like, but it seems pretty even keeled. Like I had a flannel on last night when I went for a walk. Yeah, but but I have flannels. Right, I, I, and you I, also I never a, stopped with the fanny pack. You never, you know, what I'm saying like I, you're right. consistent. I wear a flannel under my big Harley leather jacket. Yeah, yeah. No, what I'm saying is like house moms. Didn't used to wear flannels until whatever. Okay, fair enough. You know, you, fair enough. There's like, there it goes, it's the flannel wave. Like uh, Dixon has maybe brought back that, I would say, that yeah. look just a little bit. I would say Dixon dominated the flannel and game. you say, I can't afford that. I'm going to Walmart to buy my flannel. Oh, my God, yeah. I talked to Dixie Duncan. We were out in Sturgis, and he's like, uh, he had to go to Rapid City Harley-Davidson because Dixon was debuting a new Dixon shirt. Mm -hmm. And he had to be there in line to get it. Yeah. And uh, it was crazy. I'm like, like, how many of these things you own, dude? Because they're like... They're like 70 bucks. 80, yeah, 70. Yeah. He's like, he goes, I think I have 100 of them. And he goes... Dixie Duncan makes more money than you think he does, I guess. And he goes, (laughs) yeah, I'm going to stop tipping that mofo. And he goes, he goes, I... I even have the original wrapper. I keep them in the original plastic. I'm like, my God, dude, you are a 
You are a belie- you are a believer, dude. You are amazing. That's wild. Yeah, like he still got it. The all the original. That's crazy. I was just like, talking with my friend Angie the other day, and she was talking about how in the box, like yeah, she can like sell. You, you seem a little crazy. Like Chanel boxes, you can sell a Chanel box for like two hundred fifty bucks. Sure, it's like old school lunch boxes. Sort of God, dude. It's wild. So I have my Scooby Doo lunchbox. I'd be rich. Full of baseball cards. Ugh, so depressing. Mm. So depressing. I, yeah, it's a, it's a sore subject. Hi, how's it going? Oh, no. Pretty good quality uh, phone you got there. Uh, demons behind us, I guess they make a good flannel. Well, thank you for the tip. Who is it? Demons behind us. All right, never heard of it. Uh, Sounds yeah. like a well, band of ours. Uh oh! Demons behind me. Inspirational clothing and apparel. Mm, okay. The hell's going on here? They got a chicken and a bikini on the front. Look for flannels. Oh, that's a cool flannel. Yeah. But for me, it, yeah, it's how it feels and fits and all that, right? More, more of a hybrid flannel. Yeah. It's kind of not got the flannel look, but that's okay. All right. Uh. What are you doing over there? Hello? The flannel spike is real. It's insanity. Yeah. There's so much of them. Yeah. Yeah, well, the price, you know, you go to Walmart, you can get into a flannel pretty cheap. What, what brand do you prefer? What are you into? Anything? I don't, I don't prefer them, but I just noticed how crazy the spike was at the Madison Night Market last night. Uh-huh. <laughs> You're like, everybody's got one on. I was selling tie-dye, and you'd think, you know, tie-dye would be the greatest spot for that ever. Here, yeah. The lady had upscaled, upscaled flannels that she sewed a patch on the back. Yeah. She sold hundreds of them. Yeah, <gasps> yeah. Uh, are you that's, switching that's from tie dye well, to flannel? Well, they make a heavier, like an insulated flannel too. A lot of that's a that's a thing for writing too. But just don't, and, the spike is real. Okay. Everyone's wearing flannel. All right, fair enough. Thanks, man. Tie dye forever, bro. Yeah. So flannel up, like a flannel upscale. Yeah. With cool logos or like a like a Bucky. Yeah. You, right. you know, sure. I see them down at the gift shops all the time. Well, even like you go to breweries. Get a flannel at a brewery. It's Every time, seventy bucks. Every time, and you they're know? all seventy plus. Yeah, yeah, because they, and they're getting it. Yeah. So yeah, right. maybe you're right, dude. We're on a flannel maybe spike I'm right now. Underestimating the the light and uh, very uh, not so affordable, but uh, durable. And uh, what's the other word I'm looking Fashionable. for? Fashionable. Fashionable for any occasion. Fashionable, functional flannel. Feel free to take that, somebody. All right, uh, that's JJO News. Stay fresh, cheese bags. Hello. Yeah, hey, parachute pants, ah. video, dire straight, uh, money for nothing, and quiet riot. Come on, feel the noise. Ah, Come on, feel the noise. Of, made the list, yeah. I think. Oh, yeah. very nice. Or was it, we're not going to take it. And White One Snake? Yeah. That's amazing. White Snake, yeah. yeah. Snubbed. All right, thanks, man. Man, I miss coming through. I'm from Illinois, a truck driver. I used to come here all the time. Tuttle Madison is my first time through here in a while. It's great hearing you still on the air, man. Oh, dude. Oh, uh, thanks, buddy. Awesome. I, I appreciate you hanging there. Yeah. Thanks, buddy. Let's yeah, have a good one. Bye. We don't need parachute pants, so I'll argue we don't need to bring them back. Never owned a pair. Never owned one pair. That shocks me. Yep. Hi, how's it going? When you bought the best flannels in the early 90s, there is no reason to purchase any new ones. You're right, dude. I've, I, yeah, I've, I've got one. I've, I've got some I've had forever. Yeah. And they're, I, I mean, they I, don't, I, uh, the waist got a little bigger, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but uh, they're still right. there. Still there. Yeah, but if you bought them big enough and you were trying to look like Eddie Vedder back in the day, <laughs> it's all good. Oh, right. cool. Yeah, see, I was in the uh, 80s slim uh, era. Yeah. You know, every, everything had to be bald, nut-crushing tight, dude. That's just the way it was. All right, thanks. Dumbing down your smartphone. One podcast at a time. Listen, rate, and subscribe to the JJO Morning Show Podcast. Get up with Johnny and D. J.J.O. Ladies and gentlemen. Hold on, let me get my chainsaw. He's half the owner of the Full Throttle Saloon. Some people call him the greatest entertainer on earth and the author of the greatest song ever written, I Like Poontang Better Than Chicken. Ladies and gentlemen, Jesse James Dupree in the house. <laughs> look at you. Look at you. Oh, what, what, a, what a song to bring up. That's great. <laughs> yeah, but I, 
that, you know, you know the story. You know the story behind that song. It, it, it came from my, my my father because uh, I'd gotten invited up to Tanya Tucker's house. You remember Tanya Tucker, right? Mm-hmm. Delta Dawn. Mm-hmm. Delta Dawn. What's that flower you have on? And uh, so I'd gotten invited to Tanya's house for dinner, and that's a big deal. I mean, I you know, I said, "Damn, I'm going to." So I, I went to Tanya's house, and she cooked fried tomatoes, fried onions, fried okra, fried chicken. And everything was fried. She could, and she sang her whole life story while she was in the kitchen cooking. It was an incredible night for me, and uh, and so I was proud of that. I went back and told my dad. I said, "Hey, Dad, I just went and had dinner at Tanya Tucker's house." He said, "Well, did you bonk her?" And I said, "No, but she." I said, "No, but she cooked me some fried chicken." He said, "I like poontang better than chicken." <laughs> he said, "Did you boink her?" Well, no, he, I, I, this is a radio show. I didn't want to get you sent. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. Yeah. I, said, I said, man, if he said boink. <laughs> no, he said you you, you, help her, you know, but uh, but uh, you guys can beat that. With, but, uh, yeah, it's, uh, but, yeah, that's, that's – All right. We got – we got to get you on a. We got to get you on a satellite station so we can cuss. Oh, that is so cool! What a great story that is. Oh my god! Uh, so here we are, uh, new record time. So let's talk about. Uh, and by the way, uh, you got jackals at Tomahawk tonight. You guys are up at the rally tonight, right? You were playing tomorrow. Uh, playing tomorrow. tomorrow night. Tomorrow night, tomorrow night, right. night right. in Tomahawk at Jackal's Bar and Grill up there, Bonnie and Clyde's. But we're gonna. Right. I mean, we set a record for attendance last year, and I'm, the weather's gonna be beautiful. I'm expecting it to be nonetheless more packed this day, and it's gonna be a fun show. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so that that's happening and this weekend, and and then I'm celebrating today. The the new single "Never Gets Old" mm-hmm. dropped today yeah. and uh, this morning at midnight, and uh, and I co-wrote it with Brian Johnson from ACDC, and I'm mean, which is a uh, it's a, it doesn't go past me at how, that I'm a lucky son of a bitch because nobody in ACDC ever works outside their band. And the fact that I've been fortunate enough to get to know Brian and him, be a friend, and, and for us to write together, it's a big deal. And uh, But and Nigel's on the drums. It's even more special. Mm-hmm. My son's on the drums. Uh, uh, Roman's on the bass. And it just the record just happened. It wasn't, wasn't planned. It just happened, and that's the best kind of music. So when you say you wrote with Brian Johnson, was the song already written or was it a recent writing? I mean, what was the timeline on the song coming to okay. life? So, so, so here's the deal. I, ended, I, I went back and listened to some records, and I had some I very rarely amount of place where I get where I don't have anything to do. And I found myself in a situation where I was I had the time, and I, and I thought, I'm going to listen to an album front to back, which is something I had not done forever. Back in black. And so – yeah, so do I listen to? Uh, uh, I actually pulled out uh, high voltage. I listened to high voltage oh, yeah. twice. Then I then I listened to uh, Highway to Hell, and then I listened to Back in Black, and that was it. Then I went to dinner, and I forgot about it. The next day, I wake up, I have this song in my head, and I can't find. It. I go back through those albums, I can't find. It. I could hear it, but I couldn't, and I couldn't place it. Then I pick up my guitar, and I, I guess I figured I was I was just inspired. So I said, okay. So I took out my phone, and I'm sitting there recording these ideas, one idea, two ideas, three ideas on my phone so I didn't lose them. And they were just pouring out. In about 30 minutes, I had these things just channeling through me. Now, I'm not claiming, when I say channel, I'm not trying to claim I've written a song that can cure cancer. I'll leave that to Bono and Springsteen, okay? <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just saying I was influenced. And, uh, and so just like clockwork, it was not planned. The door opens up, and Nigel walks in. And Nigel walks in, and he says, Hey, I said, what are you doing home? He goes, I'm going down to see my mom in Florida. I thought I would stop by and get a free meal. And I said, go lace the drums. So then I called Roman. I said, get over here. So Roman's standing there with his bass around his neck. Nigel's got his drum, drumsticks in his hand. And they're looking at me like, okay, now what? And then I just ripped into these riffs, and they started playing. Two days later, we had an album's worth of stuff. And, and, and obviously, it was influenced by those albums that I'd been listening to. It, no joke. I'm not making bones about it. That's exactly why. And I said, it's so, Johnny, listen. I said, it's so much like ACDC, some of this stuff. I don't know if I can get away with it. <laughs> and, so, and, and I wasn't going to call Brian. I mean, you know, I mean, look, I mean, look you, don't, you know what I'm talking about. You, sometimes you just don't want to be that guy, right? So I'm not going to call Brian. And, and, and I haven't talked to Brian in about six months. And I talked to Brian in six months. And out of the blue, just like Nigel walking through the door, that Friday after we laid this stuff down, after six, maybe seven months, the phone rings. Hey, Jesse, how you doing, me son? And I'm going, hey, bro, what's up, Brian? You know, and I couldn't believe it. He, and he goes, he had some buddies over, and they wrote me, and he goes, I'm drinking some of your whiskey. So they, and they wrote, they opened up a bottle of barrel strength that we got that you can find at Festival Foods. It's a really good barrel strength Tennessee whiskey. And um, he had, uh, he opened it up, and uh, we were talking about whiskey. And then I said, look, I wasn't gonna call you. I was not gonna be that guy. I said, but since you called me. 
you got to help me write these songs. And he goes, send them down here. I got a whole notebook. So then we go back and forth. He's like a teenager, Johnny. He's like, I mean, he was so pumped. And, and, and I'm in the middle of a, a video me a conference call with Harley Davidson. I'm, my head's in a corporate mindset. And, and the phone rings, and it's Brian Johnson. And I said, guys, i got to step out. <laughs> but, and I just left that company meeting, and I, and I went into the studio, and I was recording. I, when you and I get together, remind me, and I'll play it for you because I recorded the whole conversation because I didn't want to lose any ideas because he says great stuff. And so he starts making excuses for me, he, uh, he, uh, to me. He's going, yeah, you know, I don't know. You might not like it. And, and, he, and I finally I said, Brian, tell me what the idea is because he was making excuses before he told me. And then he goes, do you remember what the Marines used to say? <laughs> and, and I said, what's that? Now, this is the guy that sang Back in Black and shook me all night long and, you know, Hell's Bells and all that stuff, right? And he starts singing some of those old Marine Corps cadences. You know how when the Marines are marching and they go, well, I don't know, but I've been told. You know? Oh, yeah. And then they say dirty they say dirty stuff behind it, right? Right. And so we were laughing about that. And he goes, I'm thinking we'd change it up a bit. It gives a chance for the audience to sing. The drums go boom, stop. He goes, well, I don't know, but I've been told. It never gets old singing, rock and roll. And I, and I said, it, I just, it, coming out of him, it, it's just, it's magic, you know? And I said, so the next thing you know, we've written these songs, and, and uh, I sent him the, the mastered version of the record. I, I sent it to... I send in mastered copy because I had Sterling Sound Master. They did everything from the Rolling Stones to Hotel California to Back in Black and Jackal's first albums. And, and uh, so I sent it to Sterling Sound. They're very expensive, but it sounds like it when they master. And, uh, and I sent it to Brian, and I got the coolest email back from him. He says, brilliant, Jesse, exclamation mark. He says, sounds mean and angry, the perfect recipe for rock and roll. I'm wishing us the very best of luck for this album. Whoa. He said, let's get some He said, let's get some rock on the radio, Bonnie lad. And then he said, I'm off to L.A. to rehearse. Wish me luck. Cheers, Brian. And I've got that framed. I mean, it's just like, yeah. if you'd have told me, I mean, I, it, listen, he and our friends, and I love him. He, I mean, he comes and stays at the house. There's no bodyguards. He's everything you'd want the singer of ACDC to be being the biggest band in the world. And, but yet it doesn't go past me. I still have to stop myself every minute and say, God, man, how cool is this? Cause I camped out. You probably did the same thing. I camped out for two nights to get front row tickets for back in black's tour. Oh. And, uh, you know, you I, know, I, and I, now here, and now I've written songs with him. So anyway, it's, it's great. The song goes live today and the lyric video is really cool. Have you seen the, have you had a chance to see the no, lyric video yet? No, I haven't even heard the song. Okay. So, uh, well, damn, Randy was being a stingy bastard. Um, so uh, with my paycheck so, yeah, the, too. The, yeah. <laughs> so the video, he, 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 if he ran it by you, that's to pay you more money. Um, <laughs> well, you do you do charge you do charge them all a car. So let's make no mistake about it. So we that, so I get it. So um, there's not many. You guys don't know this. There's not many morning shows that get to charge the station. A la carte. So like every day, Johnny gets off the air. If it's a good, if it's a good show, the invoice is one thing. If it's a mediocre show, the invoice is another. If it's a phenomenal show, it can break the bank. So and y'all, people don't know that, but I just pull the curtain back. Yeah. So um, so anyway, um, so the video, you go to YouTube, search "Never Gets Old" Jesse James Dupree, and there's a QR code on the video. You hit that QR code, and you can automatically register to win a trip to Daytona Beach, Florida, in March. And uh, oh, cool. when you got snow on the ground, you can come down to Florida. Mm. And if you can name all 35 bands that are listed in the YouTube video, we took the fonts from these famous logos, and there's 35 bands we pay tribute to. And there's photographs behind that give you some clues. Some of them are easy. Zeppelin's easy. Stones are easy. You'll, you'll see. But if you can name all 35 of them, if I pick you as a winner and you've named those 35 bands correctly, you get a bonus check of $1,000. Well, now, it's a, I'm having a blast with this. People are already, you know, trying to, and, and everybody gets to about 20 or so, and it starts getting a little tough. But they're in there, and uh, it, it, so you go to YouTube, never get sold, check that out, and then of course the single is available on all, all the platforms. Oh, and one last time, like the Ginsu Knife commercial. There's more. We're also I got a limited vinyl run. I'm doing. I'm actually press. You still have a turntable? Oh, I do. Oh, hell yeah, I do. Oh, yeah. Yeah, how, and so how, how I, dare I, you, I sir? How table. dare you? How dare you and so like Well, I had one, but you know where it's at now? Uh, it's I, in Nash. It's in Ni- It's in Nashville at Nigel's place. Oh, there you so, go. Um, I've, so I've got to. I've got to go get me a turntable because the limited vinyl run is being made. You can pre-order it now 
on jessejamesdupree.com. jessejamesdupree.com for the for the uh, limited vinyl. You can bundle it with shirts and stuff like that. But it's a uh, it's a big day, man. Anytime you get to share new music, you get excited. About He's it. serenading young ladies up in the apartment in Nashville with the Wham record, George Michael records on the old turntable. <laughs> Be careful, ladies, That's dude. It. You know what's funny about ACDC? It's like everybody everybody you talk to who loves ACDC has that story. They've got that moment. I remember in nineteen probably eighty when Back in Black came out. I remember the first time I heard it, and I remember it. Scott Effing Farnsworth, this big meathead weightlifter, played it on the boombox. And within 30 seconds, I knew I wasn't going to be a doctor. I was either going to be in a band or I was going to do something that helped a band. <laughs> I, you just know. It's that fast. Let me, let me, can I, you got to let me share this story. Hit me. Because this is perfect. It's a perfect time with what you just said. Back in, in God is 10 years ago or so, I got asked to come to a big festival in Florida. A radio station was going to present me with a plaque because I Stand Alone had been played like more times than any song on that station when they went back and tallied stuff and that kind of stuff. So it was, it was a big deal, a big honor to go in for them to present me this plaque during this festival. So I called Brian Johnson. I said, hey, Brian, their station's given me a uh, a big plaque, and I said, uh, you know, I'm just right up the road from your house. just want to let you know I'm going to be down in your neck of the woods. He said, just come to the house, my son, we'll go up together. I said, oh, wow. And I wasn't going to, again, I wasn't going to be that guy and ask him to go. Yeah. I was just wanting to see him while I was there. He said, just come to the house, and we'll go up together. So I went, that's cool as hell. So I go to his house. Johnny, we walk into his garage. Of course, he's got cars, more than one car. Yeah. He's got more than one car, yeah. And uh, you go in, and he's got this brand-new Aston Martin. You did not. I Oh my God! It's I mean it's I opened the door, and I, it buckled my knees. It was the most beautiful smell of leather I've ever had in my life, and I mean it was so rich. It was like a steak and a steak. It was so incredible. And I damn get in that damn that Heston Martin, and he did 180 all the way up. You know he raced his cars. We did 180 all the way up. We made a 45 minute drive in about 15 minutes, and we go to this festival and we pull in the back of this festival out in this back behind the stage and there's kind of a field obviously he parks this nice car a, a little ways away from everything we get out we go up there and we were there for a good bit of the day they presented me with my plaque just a little big fun day and uh and brian looks over at me and at a certain point he goes well, it's getting a bit late me son he's i'm a little hungry he said maybe we should home, head on back to the house and get some dinner i said okay let's get out of here so he and i kind of duck walked out the side you know kind of being nonchalant we kind of stepped out and we go out in the dark where his car was and we're getting in his car and these two dudes come running across the damn come running across the damn field and they're hey 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 and they had their back in black uh, cd and we're sitting in the car brian's driving i'm sitting in the passenger seat and the kids come up and brian rolls the window down and they said hey can you please sign this and uh he goes oh yeah you know he's super nice and so he's signing their stuff and then he hands it to me to sign you know, I'm like, I'm not worthy. You know, I mean, signing his back in black. I'm not, and, but he's making a big deal. Jesse, you know, and he's just such a gentleman, right? And and so he hands the CD back to him. These kids go running off, high-fiving, and just jumping. Like, just they just had you gotten that signature. And we sat there for a minute in that car. And, of course, you roll the windows up, and it gets kind of quiet in that damn nice ass morning. And we're sitting there. And he's just kind of looking ahead. And the motor's running, and he's just sitting there, and he, and he pauses. And I'm thinking, what the hell's? I'm uh -oh. thinking, what's up? He's enjoying it. And he goes, and he goes, you know, I never understood that autograph. <laughs> and he goes, and he goes, it just, he goes, I just never understood. He goes, I don't know where that came from. And and he was, and he was just thinking about it, you know. And I said, well, Brian, I can see that from say for me or for many others. <laughs> I said, but. <laughs> People know where they were when Kennedy got shot. They know where they were the day Elvis died. Oh, yeah. They know where they were, they know where they were the first time they heard Back in Black, and that's your story. Yeah. You know, it's like yeah. people – I said, I know where I was. I said, that that's a monumental album. That literally, people will tell you. It's, it's so funny because everybody will say – this is where I was the first time I heard it, and everybody remembers that. And and he sat there and he thought for a minute. He went ah, <laughs> he puts it in drive and we haul that. But he's just he's such a humble fellow. But anyway, that you made me think of that story. So obviously one of the many special moments I've had with just being around the guy. But this album, man, it's a, it's a fun album. Playing with my son, it's equally as badass. Nigel, Nigel's just got a group. Roman called me up. And he said, he goes, man, I'm listening to these men. He said, there's something about this album. He said, I can't put my finger on it. I said, I think it's Nigel. Like, seriously, 
there's a magic in what he does, and there's a magic in what he does. I mean, he just he plays what needs to be played, and it's, and it's got such a backbeat. But anyway, I'm, obviously I'm proud of it, and I hope everybody enjoys some damn new music. Well, he's only one of the most in-demand drummers out there, so mm-hmm. th- that we know. We track his career. Uh, we're big fans. Always have been. We miss seeing him. We Hopefully he gets around soon. Uh, dude, let's play the song. I got to roll. I know you got to get up to Tomahawk. Uh, give me the intro. Give me the radio. Give me the old school radio well, intro. This is why right here what you do is you tune it up, strap it on, plug it in, and crank it up right here with Brother Johnny and Biatch on WJJO. Oh, pow. Never gets old, Jesse James Dupree. Wake it up! Well, I don't know, but I've been told it never gets old. Sing your rock and roll, and it never gets old. But make it love. I'm gonna break it down. The JJO Morning Show Podcast with Johnny and D. Listen, rate, subscribe. Catch a new show every Monday through Friday. 6 till 10 a.m. on 941 JJO or streaming anywhere in the JJO app. Johnny and D. Nowhere but JJO.